Pizza. Uh, I've been thinking about this moment for a while. What would be the very first thing I said? And uh, I had lots of ideas. And in fact, the very first thing I'm going to say is, can you please get your cups together? And somebody, our stewardesses are going to walk around and collect any loose cups hanging around. Because that's what they've instructed me to say. Um, <laughs> although I don't know where they are. Can, can, are they there? Um, I feel like an aeroplane person. <laughs> it's, um, Aeroplanes are hilarious, aren't they? I was um, on an aeroplane recently. I sound like a comedian already, don't I? <laughs> on my way to the studio today. And um, they give that safety talk, you know, which uh, you, you have to pretend to be watching because you feel rude and you've heard it a thousand times. And she said, uh, in the event of hitting water, you know, life jackets, blah, blah, and um, blow this whistle. I thought, if a hundred ton jet crashing into the sea doesn't attract attention, what's a whistle going to do? <laughs> It was really strange, but um, I, I go to the Alaman occasionally to, um, to do consultation there to their family therapy team and um, the first time I ever went, the woman at the desk at the airport said to me, um, is it possible that anybody interfered with your baggage without you knowing? I thought, whoa, this is, a, this is a hard question, is it possible they did it without me knowing? Uh, I thought, this is tough. So uh, I had to phone up the other man later and say, listen, I failed the philosophy test. <laughs> I won't be coming today. <laughs> so top 10 systemic tips. When Gary gave me this title, I thought, that's great. I can do anything I want in the world. But actually, it's turned out really hard because too much choice is bad. Um, but I have to say, they're not necessarily top because, you know, I wouldn't presume such a thing. I think they're um, just things that have interested me and I hope interest you. Um, I also wouldn't say that tips necessarily tips is a bit too much like advice and uh, you know it's not particularly our scene is it to be given advice so so that's not necessarily true. Not sure about systemic either. <laughs> As, um, you know what is systemic? As I sometimes mischievously say, mis mischievously say to colleagues in like allocation meetings. And they say, yeah, do you think this uh, needs, um, this has systemic features about it, this case? Do you think they need a systemic approach? I'll say, well, does the person have a gender? Do they have a class, a culture, a race, a parent or two, a sibling? Do they have an order in that sibling, oldest, youngest, middle? Are they of this world, really? <laughs> if the answer to any of those questions is yes, then um, yes, it has systemic features. So what's systemic then, they say, I say, well, it's, you know, it's everything. <laughs> and I kind of think it is. But I suppose, in fairness, psychodynamic colleagues could say to us, um, <clears throat> well, you know, if they feel or think, then it has psychodynamic qualities. So we do need to communicate with each other. So systemic. There's also not 10 of them. <laughs> I don't know how many there are. I got a bit mixed up with numbers, so we'll see how it goes. You tell me. Um, but other than that, the title's exact. <laughs> I suppose what that leads to is, um, is irreverence, which, you know, I suppose I, people who know me know I, uh, I, think I, I think I have a healthy relationship with irreverence. I like being irreverent. Anything that is, you know, prescribed or um, powerful, I kind of find myself re rebelling against. I don't know where that comes from. Possibly some scouse thing or some Italian thing. I don't know. Anyway, it's, um, it's how it is. And, um, I think in a world of um, you know evidence-based practice and research and the importance of uh, everything, with the way the world's going, it's really important, of course, to, to bear in mind those things. Um, but I also think it's also important to be irreverent towards them as well. Um, I need two tables to to look at things. Where's Peter Stratton? He's at the back, isn't he? Peter, there was something of a hagiography yesterday with Peter. He, he is our hero. He's the research man who we all look up to, and he's made fantastic contributions to our field. And, uh, and that's, that's, of course, crucially important, as is AFT, as is the board, as are our relationships with politics and the media, and to be on the top tables, all of those things. We need to know. We need people to know the importance of our profession and what we do. But, you know, I also do wonder about what do we know and what can we know. I read something recently, the three most influential people of the last 200 years were uh, all men, 
all European, all white, of course, all Jewish, interestingly. Um, and they are Karl Marx, Albert Einstein, and Sigmund Freud. And all wrong. <laughs> Only today in the paper is a story about how Einstein was wrong. So, you know, maybe let's agree, we'll all come back in 50 years and we'll talk about the things we do today and how we believe them to be so good and so right and we'll laugh about what we used to do. So, I guess a healthy irreverence towards um, some, some of the things we do.